Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a talk on the red scaly diseases. Now if you've gone through the introduction you'll know that the mnemonic for the red scaly diseases is the PM's pet, a little cat called Petal. Remember the ex-PM, uh, Mr. Rudd with a little Siamese cat sitting on his lap, the cat's called Petal, so the PM's pet. We said that PET were the most significant diseases, psoriasis, eczema, tinea. With the first P here being pityriasis rosea and pityriasis versicolor, M for mycosis fungoides, T-cell lymphoma, and the little s for solar damage. Now we said the little cat was petal, that's the name, and it's AL to remember. A for an annular erythema, and L we said here for lupus or lichen planus, but it can also be for certain light eruptions, and for Louis, the old name for syphilis. So, psoriasis eczematinia, annular erythema, lupus, lichen planus. Now, in the red scaly diseases, the common ones that you're going to see in general practice are going to be these. Psoriasis, eczema, tinea, pityriasis rosea, and pityriasis vesicolor. The other ones are going to be a lot more uncommon. You know, T-cell lymphomas aren't really that common. Um, but it's important to recognize them, and there are subtle differences. Lupus isn't that common either, but it's a red scaly disease that's going to occur in sun-exposed areas. Parasoriasis is an early form of uh, mycosis fungoides, an early form of T-cell lymphoma. Lichen planus, it's an autoimmune disease, primarily affects the inside of the mouth and has itchy, purplish papules at the wrists. And then there are several other rarer pityriasis diseases, pityriasis rupert pilaris, Pityriasis lichenoides. We'll make mention of those. But it's still these five. Psoriasis, eczema, tinea, pityriasis rosea, pityriasis versicolor. If you look at a rash and it's red and scaly, these are the ones that should come to mind. So how do you approach it? <coughs> Step one. You've said that it's red and scaly. You're saying PM's pet yourself, a little cat called Pedal. You're going to have a look at the scale first. And you're going to see if there's breaks in the surface of the skin and if there's any oozing or weeping. Because if there is, then the likeliest diagnosis is eczema, some form of eczema. Psoriasis doesn't weep, or at least not commonly. Occasionally, if you really rub psoriasis in the lower legs, you will get some degree of eczema superimposed. But even then, it's usually the more um, discoid eczema type, the thickened type. So, first of all, look to see if there's any little cracks with oozing or weeping. If there is, it's an eczema. Then scratch it and see the nature of the scale. In psoriasis, you're going to get a silvery wax, candle-like scale. And then step three, the next thing you're going to do with a red scaly disease in general practice is you're going to take some scrapings for fungal culture. Do that early. You know, don't prescribe a topical cortisone or something else without doing scrapings, first of all. Because tinea fungal infections, they can, um, they can fool you. They can look like other disorders. Pityriasis rosea, we said you're going to diagnose this because of the herald patch. This is a red scaly area that's round, looks like a ringworm, that occurs on the trunk usually first of all, and then a few days later the oval shaped lesions, of typical lesions of pit rosea come out with a distribution along the rib lines. And pityriasis versicolor, You'll recognize that because in, in someone who's tanned, the involved areas will be white, but very finely scaled. And if someone has pink, uh, has white skin, then the lesions actually look pink. So it depends where you are. Here in the Gold Coast, where we have a lot of sun, pityriasis versicolor presents as uh, white spots on a tanned background. Whereas in Tasmania, where I used to work, where people don't go out in the sun as much, it would present as a lightly pink lesion with very fine scale against the white background of the skin. This is just a composite picture of uh, psoriasis, you know, the typical thick scale. Um, less scale but much more extensive involvement there. A typical patch here. And this is the guttate variant of psoriasis, or raindrop variant. This is the type that follows a streptococcal throat infection. We get a whole lot of small lesions coming up. You can go back to this presentation and just click in these images to see them much bigger. Now, 
What else do you need to know about psoriasis? Well, it grows eight to times faster than normal. So that's why the skin grows. So that's why you get that thick buildup of scale that's easily scraped off. Usually the lesions are very sharply defined. You know, you can see how sharply defined they are here. And the background colour is that salmon pink colour. That's just the increased blood flow that you get in psoriasis. But some types of irritated psoriasis, you know, can be much redder. And if ever you, you look in the lesion and wondering if it is psoriasis, the next thing you do is you look at the more typical areas where you're going to see it. And that means the scalp, the elbows, the knees, sometimes the buttock cleft, occasionally on the genitals, around the umbilicus. And also look at the nails, because psoriasis can affect the nail matrix, um, which is the bit at the base of the, the nail behind the posterior nail fold, and behind the cuticle. Um, or it can affect a nail bed, which is the bit under the hard bit of the nail. Oh, there we said here, look in the, the flexures under the uh, uh, under the breasts or in the groin, because there you'll see that psoriasis is smooth and non-scaling. In any flexural surface like that, you don't get the scale. You'll still get a little bit of scale around the outer edges, but you don't get scale in the, in the actual flexure itself. There's a composite picture of eczema. You can see um, here these small erosions, these little breaks in the surface of the skin that are oozing. Now, acute eczema has that. The more chronic the eczema, the more the skin's rubbed and thickened, then the less of this oozing that you, in fact, see. Typical eczema in a child. Again, typical anterior flexure involvement, uh, the front of the elbows, behind the knees. And this is the thicker type of uh, eczema you'll sometimes see in the lower legs called discoid eczema. Again, there's usually little breaks in the skin. There's often a bit of secondary infection, a secondary infection in that. But the main thing are these small erosions um, with oozing. Whenever you see that, you've got an eczema, not a psoriasis. The other thing is eczema is usually itchy. You know, psoriasis, look, it can be itchy, um, but not to the same extent as an eczema is. The other type of eczema you may see, excuse me, <coughs> is a contact eczema. And that's where you've become allergic to something you're directly in contact with. And that usually will remain localized at unusual areas. It's not going to be symmetrical um, like atopic dermatitis is. You know, you're not going to get it equally on both sides. With a contact, it's going to be primarily on the side that mainly came in contact with the thing that you're allergic to, particularly plants. Okay, psoriasis, eczema. The next red scaly disease was tinea. I think most of us are very aware of tinea, the ringworm, a little scaly edge here on the outer edge of the lesion, some clearing in the center. Um, here you've got a tinea extending out from a buttock cleft, and you can see again this irregular edge, a little bit of clearing in the middle, but still a scaly area. Here's a tinea that's been extending on the surface of the hand, and this one isn't as scaly. And the reason it isn't is because strong topical steroids have been applied to that. But you'll still sometimes see the scale at the edge. And this is someone where it's uh, they're immunosuppressed, and it's uh, difficult to see that as a tinea. But uh, immunosuppressed patients or patients who have uh, had strong topical steroids applied, that changes the scale. There isn't as much scale in those individuals. This is the other feature of tinea. It's the slowly spreading scaly edge, gradually extending over the surface. Uh, not usually itchy, and it's certainly not as symmetrical as psoriasis or eczema. So, PET, psoriasis, eczema, tinea. We've looked at those. What were the initial P's? Pityriasis rosea, pityriasis versicolor. This is pityriasis rosea. This is the herald patch. Now, for all the world, that looks like a tinea infection. Um, you know, a ringworm. Um, and for a few days, that <laughs> it really does look like that. Now, if you've done some scrapings of this, you'll know that uh, uh, they're going to be negative. You're not going to see any fungal hyphae in the scrapings. And then the other lesions start to come out along the, the lines of the ribs. And here, here it's shown here. Look at these oval-shaped lesions here. Sometimes you'll get, now usually, sorry, pityriasis rosea, you tend to find in the trunk, covered areas. It tends not to be in the face or other sun-exposed areas. Um, but occasionally you'll get an inverse type of pityriasis rosea where it just occurs in the flexures. But it's still going to have a herald patch, and it's still going to have these oval-shaped lesions following the lines 
of the peripheral nerves. So another red scaly disease. It's probably viral induced. We get little epidemics of it. Self-limiting goes over a six to eight, occasionally a 12 week period. It never lasts longer than 12 weeks. If you've got a rash that you think spitteriasis rosea and it's lasted longer than 12 weeks, it isn't. It's more likely to be psoriasis, one of the other red scaly diseases. <coughs> In pit rosea, you usually do get a peripheral scale, but it's a trailing scale. It's on the inside edge of this. Whereas usually, in a, if it was a tinea infection, the scale would be in the outer edge of this. Um, usually it's not all that itchy, but you do get more um, atypical versions that can be more florid looking, more red looking, and can be more itchy. So, psoriasis, eczema, tinea, pitoriasis, rosea, we've covered those. What was the other important one? The red scaly disease, pitoriasis versicolor. Pitoriasis means bran-like, very fine scales. You know, you have to take your finger edge to scrape this to bring the little scale up. There's the uh, lesion. Let's actually, let's just bring this image up. Let's see if we can get it up. There we go. There's this lesion um, here, the white lesions against this tanned background. If you take a fingernail to these, you'll find that these have a very fine scale associated with them. But there's the lesion um, of pitoriasis fasciculor on someone with pale skin. Look, look at it here. It's pink. Doesn't look the scale of psoriasis. Doesn't look as florid as psoriasis does. Um, but you need to take your fingernail to rub the surface of that to bring up the fine bran-like scale. So these are the two presentations of pitoriasis versicolor. It's a little yeast infection that grows on the surface of the skin. We all have a little bit in our skin surface, but some people sweat excessively. And uh, there's something in the sweat that encourages this little yeast organism to grow. And when it does, this is what happens. A little bit of selenium sulfide shampoo, you know, rubbed over there, um, washed off after 10 minutes, that will gradually get rid of this. And there's a variety of antifungal creams that can be used and little antifungal tablets like fluconazole that can be used as well. But treatment's another issue. So those um, were the five major conditions, psoriasis, eczema, tinea, pit rosea, pit vesicula, the red scaly diseases, the PM's pet. <coughs> the little cat called Petal. Now, the M, I said this stood for mycosis fungoides, T-cell lymphoma. That's a rare condition. You don't see it terribly often, but um, let's have a little look at this composite image. Here's a plaque here underneath the, uh, the nipple and the areola on one side. You can see it's red, it's scaly, you might look and say, is there any small little erosion there for eczema? Not really, you take your finger on that scale and see if you get the candle wax scale that you get in psoriasis. And you don't. It's a different sort of scale. But this plaque, you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking that might be psoriasis. That's just been slowly growing. Fairly well-defined edge. Um, this is how it more usually presents as several lesions. Uh, and again, difficult to make this diagnosis. You have to honestly make it with taking a biopsy. You take a punch biopsy of probably two or three of these and you go for the bit that's thickest because in this condition abnormal lymphocytes, this one the T cells, are invading into the epidermis and the more of these cells that come into the epidermis the thicker these red plaques become. So they would be a lot thicker in someone who's presenting with a T cell lymphoma like this. And this is an unusual one, you know, there's, there's almost breaks in the surface of the skin here. Um, and as I said, this could even be a, a deep fungal infection. Now, we mentioned parasoriasis before, and I said it was an early form of uh, T-cell lymphoma. This is how it may look. You get that cigarette paper wrinkling of the, of the surface of the, of the skin. Um, and uh, again, it's fairly well defined, but this is very early cell lymphoma of the skin, and you're only going to diagnose that by a biopsy. So, let's flick out of that. I've commented there that this can be a, 
a difficult clinical diagnosis early, but it's still a clinical diagnosis. It's an even more difficult past diagnosis early. But that's for another talk and another time. I've mentioned slowly going plaque, sharp edges, sometimes bizarre shapes as well. I haven't shown you an example like that, but T-cell lymphoma will sometimes give you um, funny shaped lesions as well. Have a little look at the reference here on it. Have a little look at some other images of it in Global Skin Atlas by just clicking these links. S for solar, I'm not going to go over just now. Um, there's so much to, to show in that. But just remember sun damage, be it solar keratosis, be it uh, an early SCC, um, they can, SCC inside you, they can look like skin rashes, especially a variant called porokeratosis um, that looks like a rash, especially in the outer aspects of the arms and the legs. Um, the little cat's name was Petal, A-L, A for an annular erythema, erythema annularis centrifugum. I'm not sure if we've got a, a picture of that. We don't. Um, let me flick into this and just show you a little picture. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay. This is an annular erythema, EAC, erythema annularis centrifugum. Now again, on its own, you might look at this and say, trailing scale, this looks like the herald patch of pityriasis rosea, and it does. But the thing is, these will be here for a couple of weeks or so, and you can see there's another one here, and they ultimately join up together, and you get uh, figure eight shapes of these. ESC uh, can occur as sort a of reaction pattern in the skin. You might have a fungal infection elsewhere. It sometimes can occur because of a drug reaction. But a lot of cases occur um, on the body, progress over a period of four to six weeks, and then just disappear. And we never know what the cause is. Difficult to diagnose without doing a biopsy. It has a classic picture if you do a little biopsy. So that's what an erythema annularis centrifugum, an annular erythema looks like. Um, there was the L for lupus I wanted to show you. I don't know if we have it here. We don't. These were some of these other rarer ones. Let me just flick back to lupus. Lupus <coughs> is a red... Oops, it's a red scaly disease, but it's, it's unusual. The scale's different. Look how adherent that scale is. If you try and pick that off, you'll sometimes see little bits protruding from the base of that scale, and those little bits are going down hair follicles, and it's called a carpet tack scale. I don't know if you remember what a carpet tack looks like, but it's the thing with little protruding edges that's used to hold the carpet down. Well, it's like a carpet tack scale. You know, this is a young woman, and she's got this red scaly area on her nose. You, you might think that looks like solar damage. It looks like some form of skin cancer. But she hasn't got anything else there. You know, she's not got any other solar damage elsewhere. Why in heaven's name should she just have that bit there um, of solar damage? You'd expect the background solar damage to be much more if this was, if this was due to solar damage. But this is discoid lupus. There's an insert here of someone else with more typical discoid lupus. These lesions here. This is all discoid lupus. looks like a sort of scar. Look at that involvement around the edges of the ear here, too, with a little bit of scale. You know, again, sun-exposed areas, this area here, too. And often, even the um, uh, entrance into the inner, uh, the external ear canal here can be involved, red and scaly. Difficult diagnosis to make without doing a biopsy, little punch biopsies needed. So these are the sort of two presentations of... Uh, of discoid lupus. Now we mentioned the other P diagnosis, the other rarer ones. I said pityriasis rubra pilaris, pityriasis lichenoides, pityriasis alba. Um, I was going to show a composite of those below, but uh, I haven't done that yet. You can look them up in, uh, in Global Skin Atlas. Let's just reiterate. The red scaly diseases, PM's pet, petal, the little cat, P-E-T-A-L, P for psoriasis, E for eczema, T for tinea, A for an annular erythema like EAC, erythema annularis centrifugum, L for lupus, perhaps lichen planus. And the initial P at the, at the beginning of PM's pet for pityriasis rosea, pityriasis versicolor, 
the M for mycosis fungoides and the little s for solar damage. PM's pet. Have a little look through this. Look at the references that we've put in there. And any other questions? Give me an email. But remember, the red scaly disease are very common. And PM's pet, little cat called Petal, it'll give you potential differential diagnoses. You can look at the patient clinically to diagnose psoriasis, little oozing for eczema, spreading edge for tinea. The curious annular lesions of erythema annularis centrifugum, um, alpha lupus, solar damage where you'd least expect it, pityriasis uh, rosea, the herald patch, and the other lesions coming along the lines of the ribs, pityriasis versicolor, white lesions on a tan background in sun-exposed uh, individuals, pink lesions on a white background skin in people who aren't getting a lot of, uh, a lot of sun, and then the other rarer ones but we'll deal with those in another section. Now go on to the red scaly diseases. Have a look at that little link there, and we'll do a video on that as well. Or the red non-scaly disease, I should say. Um, these ones are going to be the mnemonic, remember. See you later at the Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie. They're interesting. And that mnemonic covers a whole lot of the common red non-scaly diseases. So have a look at it next. Thanks very much.